Hello, everybody. Welcome to the video of our online learning for interpretive reading and argumentative writing class. And this time, we're going to discuss about cause and effect essay. So this is Miss Arifa, and let's take a look at what we are going to discuss today. I hope that all of you are doing fine at home or wherever you are. And stay healthy first thing first what is actually a cause and effect essay i believe that you can get a hint from the name itself so a cause and effect essay is a form of writing that talks about the reasons why something happened or we can call it causes or the effects of a phenomenon so that means you have to choose first what phenomenon that you want to discuss in your essay and then in one essay the focus is usually only one causes or effects and not both so I would suggest you to just choose uh, whether you want to talk about the causes of one phenomenon or the effects of one phenomenon and not both of them and what I mean by focus here is uh, what you are going to discuss as your main idea or something that you will mention in your thesis statements and you will explain in your body paragraph. I hope that you still remember about thesis statement and body paragraphs from last um, essay which is comparison and contrast. Now, what, is, uh, what are actually causes and effects? It seems like straightforward, but sometimes this can confuse people. Like, what are the causes of something? Which one is first? Which one is uh, a first? Which, uh, is it the chicken or the eggs or the eggs first and then the chickens? You know, there are sometimes debates um, that exist in understanding causes and effects. Okay, so what you need to pay attention to is that in writing a cause-effect essay, your argument must be logical. Uh, I think in any essay, in any formal essay, your argument must be logical, but we will discuss about that later. Um, please uh, make sure that you don't mix up between causes and effects. Causes are the answer to a question, why did this happen? And effects are the answer to a question. If this happened, what would happen next? Okay, so uh, please make sure that you don't mix them or um, put them the other way around. Okay, let's take a look at this example um, below. Uh, the first example is uh, what happened is that you are running out of gasoline. Say, for example, you ride your motorcycle or drive your car, then you're running out of the gasoline. That's a cause. So what is the effect of running out of the gasoline? So that your motorcycle cannot start. So this is quite straightforward. One cause, one effect. But sometimes one cause can uh, have a lot of effects or one effect has a lot of causes like the example, uh, the next example. The cause here, coronavirus outbreak in the world. That's the cause. What is right now happening that makes you have this online class. So what are the effects of this coronavirus outbreak? We have a lot of effects. The effects is uh, our schools are shut down for a while and then people have to stay inside many people died so these are some of the effects of coronavirus outbreak so here you have one cause but with many effects now this the next example is um, the uh, the example of where a lot of causes cause one effect so what are the causes the causes here are government's slow response to pandemics unreliable information spreading in the internet you know as you can see in a lot of whatsapp messages and then growing number of coronavirus victims can you guess what is one effect that is caused by all of this 
Well, of course, the effect is people's panic and stress. Uh, as you can see here, we have one effect, but many causes. So example number two and number three are the approach that I would suggest you to have when you write your essay, because remember, when you write your essay, um, the rule is the same, at least you have two body paragraphs. So that means you have to talk about at least two causes or two effects, depends on which one you choose. You want to talk about effects or you want to talk about causes. Now, when it comes to causes and effects, it is really important to be careful uh, to justify an argument. You need to make sure that your justification, whether X has really caused Y or vice versa, or if Y has been the result of X, uh, logical. To show that, I'm going to provide here two examples. Uh, the first example is the not so good one, and then the second example is the better one that I would suggest you to follow. Here in example number one, we have facts. The first fact is the people in the city like littering. That's fact number one. And then we have fact number two, the city got flooded. If we see in a glance, it seems like both facts are connected to each other. So we probably can easily argue that the people in the city have caused the plot. But if you pay attention to it carefully, um, actually this justification is not so logical or we can say not so strong because the connection between people littering and flood uh, is not so direct. Uh, here we only know that two facts that people like littering and then that the city is flooded. It doesn't mean uh, why is this not so good argument because when the city got flooded it doesn't mean that it's because of the people. Okay, But there is still uh, another uh, or other processes uh, in between the uh, people and also the flood that happened in the city. So we can say that the the connection between them are not uh, is not direct. So this is not really a good argument. But let's take a look at the example number two. In the example number two, we have the facts here. The first fact is the trash people produce has clogged the sewers. Uh, you see here, it's not about the people, but it's the it's the trash that clogged the sewers. So the trash people produce has um, produce has clogged the sewers all over the city. That water cannot be streamed to ocean well. That's fact number one. And then fact number two: the city got flooded. So the argument that we can say is the clogged sewers may be the cause of the flood in the city. Why is this a better argument? Because if you see carefully, we can see the relationship that is clear and it can be justified um, by showing um, uh, by showing the uh, because we see the 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 direct connection between uh, the clock sewers here. Okay, there are clock sewers and also also the flock the flooded. The flood. So when the sewers are clogged, the water races to the surface, and then um, that causes the water to flood the city. So that's why this one is a better argument that you um, need to use um, as the example of how uh, to create argument in your essay later. Now, you see the picture of a burger here. <laughs> now we're going to talk about the parts of cause and effect essay. You do remember the burger that we talk about in comparison and contrast, right? Uh, I have explained 
to you that an essay is like a burger. Why is it like a burger? Because, uh, so what is a burger? In a burger, you need two buns, the lower, um, the top one, and also the lower one. The, the top buns and also the lower buns. And also in between, you need all this rich and good and delicious content and so is your essay. So your essay needs the good buns, which is the introduction and conclusion, and also need a good, rich body paragraph, which is your meat, your vegetables, your tomato sauce, and lettuces, and any ingredients that you want to put in there. Okay, so if you want to make a delicious uh, burger, that means your essay is also has your essay has also to be rich uh, with information. Okay, now let's take a look at the parts of cause and effect essay, and let's see if it's um, different from the comparison and contrast. Basically, all essays are the same. They always have introductory paragraph they always body has body paragraphs and they always have concluding paragraphs what makes it different is in the information in it and how you create or uh, present that information so in a cause and effect essay uh, first in the introductory paragraph you are going to need a hook what is a hook? It's something to capture readers' attention. Uh, what makes readers want to read your essay? And it also provides the background information of your topic. And of course, every essay must have a thesis statement. I hope that you still remember what is thesis statement, but we are going to discuss again later. Okay, and then of course, um, an essay always has um, body paragraphs and remember your essay must have at least two body paragraphs. Uh, of course, in the, in, the, in the body paragraph, because this is cause and effect essay, on the first paragraph, body paragraph, you are going to talk about the first cause or the first effect. And then on body paragraph two, you're going to talk about the, f the second cause or the second effects and you always need justifications on your paragraphs. We're going to discuss this on the next meeting. Okay, and of course, uh, the last part is concluding paragraph. As usual, in a concluding paragraph, you're going to have a summary and also your opinion. All right. Now, Let's take a look at how we build the introduction. Uh, what are the parts of the introduction? In the introduction, you have two parts. The first one is the hook. As you can see here, I have a picture of a hook. As you can see from this picture, a hook is something that can uh, capture something. And what we capture here is reader's attention. Um, let me read this. A hook is a part that functions to persuade. Okay, um, I will um, underline this. Persuade the readers to read your essay. And a hook is usually followed by background information to connect to your topic. You can write a hook by stating something on the contrary to your focus of the essay. Uh, so, for example, you want to talk about causes of a phenomenon you might want to talk about the effects on your hook and vice versa so in your thesis statement you talk about the causes and in your hook you talk about the effect if you want to talk about effects then in your hook you talk about causes okay i hope you're not confused we're going to talk about it um uh, with examples later Okay, the next part of introduction is thesis statement. I hope you still remember what is a thesis statement and what is a good thesis statement. So, thesis is a statement, I hope you still remember where to put it. We understand that thesis statement is the main idea of the essay. And this um, thesis statement is usually in the introduction and 
many time is at the last sentence of the introduction. And please remember that uh, the body paragraph must contain what is mentioned in the thesis statement. Um, well, to be clear, you might want to go again to check the PowerPoint and the material that you, we use to discuss comparison and contrast essay just to see more examples of thesis statements. Okay, now let's go to uh, the first thing that you can do in building your introduction. First thing first, you can create a framework. Of course, uh, for some people, they don't like making framework, but I would really suggest to make a framework. This framework is going to function um, to help you write easily because you have plan. So in the framework, you basically just uh, write what you want to discuss. Okay, so uh, let's let's say take a look at the uh, the people around you. You want to talk about um, here in the example. Um, I want to talk about my interest is in plastic bag. Why? even though so many people have said that plastic bag is dangerous and stuff like that but why do people still like using plastic bag why is the consumption um, not declining that's what is my interest so i'm going to put it in my framework this is the topic of my essay and then i'm going to uh, brainstorm uh, the reason or the causes of uh, plastic bag cons consumptions and I came up with these two ideas uh, first thing first uh, plastic consumption is very high because I think it's convenience you know because of uh, the convenience it's easy it's easy to find it's easy to carry and stuff like that so it's a matter of convenience people like it because uh, it's 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 easy to bring um, okay and also a uh, plastic bag I think after I brainstorm I think plastic bag is still used a lot because it's cheap uh, just compare when you buy uh, carton or any other bags made by um, fabrics or any other uh, other other um, I, I don't know what to call it like um, other thing rather than plastic they are not cheap they are always um, Ex more expensive than uh, plastic bag. Plastic bag is very cheap and that's why probably people like it. So I have two arguments here of the causes of the plastic bag consumption. So this is my framework. This is my brainstorming and maybe you can do the same thing. After you have built your framework, now it's time for you to create your thesis statement. Why is this uh, thesis statement first? As you have known before, that thesis statement is the like the core of the essay, it's the main idea of the essay. So it's important to have thesis statement before you start writing your essay. So we have, uh, this is my framework that I saw you before. This is my framework. And from this framework, I create my thesis statement, which has to include the topic and then the causes um, of my topic because I choose causes you if you choose effects then you brainstorm effects here and this is the result of uh, combining my topic and also my two points that I want to discuss in my essay uh, I put it in a sentence, this fantastic number of plastic consumption is likely not to decline rapidly because plastic bags are convenient and cheap. As you can see here, I put uh, point number one, also point number two of my causes in my 
thesis statement and this is very important it's very important that you have all your topic discussed here and then you have your point that you want to discuss in your essay in your thesis statement um, I hope uh, this is not um, confusing for you because you also have done thesis statement in comparison and contrast essay okay now uh, we're going to start to create a hook this is basically uh, what captures a reader's attention for the first time so it's it's almost like in your essay this is this is the place where you say hi to the reader wave your hand just like what we see in the picture here okay so um, what what should be in a hook so first first thing first before you make a hook take a look at your thesis statement so we have our um, my thesis statement that I built before okay so after I built my thesis statement I'm going to see what information that I probably will need in my hook okay well I'm talking about number okay so I'm going to need that I need the number I need the statistic of plastic cons consumption okay and yeah it's about consumption so I'm going to think about my experience of using plastic bag and what happened around me okay um, as you can see here the topic is about causes of plastic consumption so in your hook you can talk about the effects of plastic consumption or some facts about plastic consumption as I told you before that hook can be the opposite of thesis statement so if your thesis statement is um, talking about the cause in your hook you can talk about the effects or you can also provide some facts about plastic consumption you can also um, make a hook by giving example from your real life uh, experience uh, it's also uh, can be from your uh, opinion you can also put some descriptions or if you want it to be more formal and you want it to be more academic you can find data or facts from published resources like what I do here I need a number like what I do here I need a number so that means I need data okay if I need data then I have to look for data from uh, sources because I don't have the data so I need sources okay now let's take a look at the example in, in this page this is the example of the hook that I create from my thesis statement about plastic consumption and why or the causes um, why it's not declining yet first thing first what I put in my hook is to show my uh, experience when I uh, see when I shop in supermarkets or in in any in, in many places that I will be asked by cashier uh, certain amount of money if I want to use plastic bag if I bring my my own bag then I don't have to pay for um, that money so I create a quotation of a cashier here in my hook I do this first so this is um, uh, I I started my hook by showing my experience of shopping and then I have to pay for plastic bag okay that's my first uh, part of the the hook uh, by showing my experience and then I give more explanation of that experience here this is no longer a unique phenomenon in Indonesian supermarket 
blah 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 to this part okay this part I explain um, the phenomenon that I uh, mention first here why do we need to pay 300 Indonesian rupiah there so I give more explanation here and then after I give my experience and then uh, explanation of that experience I also and then give the data of the number that I need actually how many plastic bags uh, used by people in the world and that's why I put data from a source here my source is the world count websites I'm going to talk about how to put uh, uh, information from a source later uh, in this video but I just want to show you here what I do with my hook okay and then after I finish with my hook as you can see here I and then put my uh, thesis statement in the last sentence of my introduction and there you go you have a complete introduction uh, with the hook uh, shown in the blue font here and also the thesis statement this is a complete introduction okay so you can create the hook from different sources like I do here I I use my experience and then explain that experience and then after that I use uh, data or facts from reliable source and then of course I have my thesis statement I hope that's clear enough for you now now let's talk about how to put facts or data that you take from other sources because uh, there is a rule to do that you cannot just put something okay first thing first you must not forget to write the author or the writer of the source just remember that writer or author of the source is not always human it's not always a name of a person it can be an organization uh, if it's a speech then mention a speaker because sometimes we we have information from um, speeches too okay and then second don't forget to mention the year that source is published this is usually provided in the in the article in the websites that you uh, visit the, the the year is there and then put the year in parenthesis okay uh, put in the parenthesis like this one okay what else that we need to pay attention to read the source thoroughly and then make sure you understand the content or the information you need I always strongly suggest to students if you don't understand what you read please do not use that please do not use that article or that speech just use something that you really understand if you don't understand find another resource and then after that paraphrase the information with your own words I hope that you still remember uh, the tricks and the tips of how to paraphrase information we have done that in our early meetings about how to paraphrase and how to summarize so you know what you have to do in choosing information and uh, taking information from a source it is strongly suggested that you paraphrase the information and not just copy paste from that source Okay, and then write the paraphrase information in your hook and don't forget to mention the author and also the year. Now let's take a look at the exact example of um, how to do it in the hook that we have seen before. Okay, uh, so in the hook that I showed you before, the information that I need was the number of plastic bags consumed in the world 
as I told you before, I need the number so uh, to make my information more valid and more academic. So what I do is then I, I Google and I try to find information and then I come to this website that I believe is reliable because the website um, is dedicated um, in providing a lot of variety of statistics about a lot of things. And when I look for the information of the plastic bag consumption, the website actually provides that. And this website is not just someone's blog, but this is an organization that is dedicated in providing data uh, and statistics. And so this is the original information um, in the website. Yeah, this is the um, the original uh, words that is in in this website. Now, and then I paraphrase it into this one. So first thing first, as I have told you before, do not forget to mention the author of the. Um, the 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 information so who writes this it just happens that in this website the writer is not one person so it's not a name of a person but this is an organization called uh, and a website called the world count so what I write here is the author so the author is the world counts and then after that this information um, this information happens to be uh, written in 2018 so I write it here 2018 and then after that I give the information that or I already paraphrase using my own words I hope that is clear for you all so remember to always mention the author and then mention the year in, in par parenthesis and then paraphrase the information. Okay, I hope this is clear enough for you. And I hope that in your introduction, at least, you know, put one data or one facts. It doesn't have to be number, but it's a fact that you uh, take from an expert or or an organization that is that knows about the phenomena that you choose okay still talking about the sources um, there are certain things that you need to remember first please choose reliable source of information uh, do not only take information from Wikipedia because in Wikipedia everybody can edit the information so we don't know who edit that information it can be someone who is really an expert or it can be just someone um, you know just anybody so that what makes Wikipedia is not really a reliable source so please avoid Wikipedia and please also avoid uh, blogs from uh, someone because um, it's, it's not really reliable because we don't know who the person is uh, is the person uh, an expert in that phenomenon or not try to choose um, for an article but I'm not sure that you are comfortable yet to to read a journal articles or at least a website that are professional and expert in that topic uh, say you want to talk about uh, education for example in Indonesia then you probably want to visit the website from Kementerian Pendidikan dan Kebudayaan for example or if you want to talk about drugs then find uh, information from a website of an organization that deals with uh, drugs uh, and so on I believe that you can recognize which one is the professional website okay uh, the example that I gave you before the hook about plastic bags I took from the world count as I explained before that why is this website reliable 
because this website specializes in providing uh, statistic and data uh, about a lot of things. So their source is considered as reliable. Okay, let me uh, remind you of the parts of our essay, just like any other essay. This is like uh, a burger where you have the buns and also uh, the uh, filling of the burger. Now, when we talk about body paragraph or score, of course, we talk about the one here in the middle. Uh, so basically, we talk about all this the lettuce, the beef burger, the cheese, the tomato sauce. Now, how to build the body paragraph. Uh, there are certain ways that you can follow. Uh, but first, let's talk about the parts of the body paragraph. What are the parts? Of course, any paragraph should have a topic sentence. This is like the main idea of the paragraph. You must have a topic sentence and this is usually in the beginning of the paragraph. So this is the first sentence that you uh, should create in your body paragraph. And of course, well, its name is topic sentence. So please make sure this is a full sentence. So make sure you have a subject and also make sure that you have the main verbs. And then of course, all paragraphs need a supporting detail. This is the argument. This is the justification. This is like uh, the logical reason why you believe what you write in your topic sentence. How to do it? You can just put a description or examples or uh, data from a source or uh, any analysis and further explanation of the topic that you discuss. In cause and effect essay, this means that you have to prove logically why you think that X is causing Y or oh, this is Y or Y is really the, F, uh, the effect of X. And then conclusion, uh, this is good to have, uh, it's good to have a conclusion in your body paragraph. Um, well, just like any other conclusion, this is basically uh, the summary of the ideas that you talk about in your topic sentence and also supporting detail. Remember, do not, please do not just repeat the same or similar words in the topic sentence. Use your paraphrasing skills that you have built in the early meetings of our class. All right, so what is the step-by-step -step, uh, to build your body paragraph? First, as usual, I would really strongly suggest create your framework first, because if you don't have framework, usually you will write uh, uncontrollably you don't um, stick to the course you don't stick to your topic and you, and then you go everywhere but if you have a framework it's going to help you to stay on your path to stay on the course okay uh, so make some kind of framework this is something that uh, similar is similar to what we did in the introduction first you know that uh, you have your uh, thesis statement here, okay? And then uh, after you make your thesis statement, uh, remember that you have two focus. Like in this example, the focus is the the reason. Uh, the topic is the reason why plastic bag is um, really highly used or consumed and the reason or the causes uh, are because it's convenient and the second one is because it's cheap so convenience is going to be um, the point that you're going to discuss in paragraph one body paragraph one and then cheap is going to be discussed in body paragraph two so at least now we know the topic of uh, the two body paragraphs that we want to write. Of course, you don't 
uh, it's not a must that you only have two body paragraphs you can have more you can have three you can have four it's up to you but the minimum number of body paragraph uh, are two okay and in this example I only make two okay now let's build the body paragraph or um, you can say prepare the lettuce of your burger okay so first create your topic sentence from the framework we already know the topic is about the convenience of using plastic bag as the cost of plastic consumption from here you can make a full sentence to start your body paragraph let's take a look at how I make this okay so first I'm going to make a transition signal like I'm saying the first reason okay and then the one that I underline here is the topic of my essay uh, which is the consumption of plastic bag and here I use the word fans of plastic bag okay remember when you paraphrase you uh, you use uh, synonyms and then after that I give the explanation of the topic which is the convenience of the plastic bag now there you go you have a complete sentence of the topic sentence uh, I think this is pretty easy and next the, the, the challenge is to prove whether our topic sentence is something logical that means we need supporting details for the justification okay now first take a look at the topic sentence the first reason that plastic bag has a lot of fans is because it's convenient to you so our focus here is the convenient we have to prove to people the logical reason why we think that plastic bag is convenient uh, so we need to create the supporting details but uh, supporting detail must be something uh, that is rich and good just like you know the meat of your burger okay let's see what we have here uh, after you see your topic sentence and then uh, think about how you would prove it if if you uh, have an argument with someone and then you say no plastic bag is convenient then prove it justify uh, why is it convenient or easy to use uh, you can use a description example data further explanation or analysis um, and please remember no matter what you use it must be logical okay now let's take a look at the example of a good beef burger here uh, okay now we see uh, this purple one is the uh, the topic sentence and then the red part is the supporting detail uh, as you can see here to explain the convenience uh, of the uh, plastic bag I use uh, three reasons the first one uh, I argue that plastic bag is convenient because it is light okay it's it is light it almost has no weight and as you can see here I do not only explain uh, that it is light but and then after that I still give explanation what I mean by lightweight here what I mean by lightweight here uh, I use the further explanation here or further analysis that plastic bag is so easy to fold um, I think many of you experience that and then you can put uh, the plastic bag in your bag uh, without any significant weight addition so your bag is, uh, is still not um, your bag does not become very heavy just because you put a plastic bag inside and then the second argument that I use here the second argument that I use um, here is because plastic bag is so easy to hold so it's really like you know um, 
if, uh, efficient okay yeah it's easy to hold uh, because you know remember when um, you shop and then you carry a plastic bag you can just carry it with one hand um, uh, compared to paper bags for example if you use paper bags you have to carry it with both hands so it's easy to use and you can see here after I use my point of easy I will also give another explanation okay this way you will have a rich uh, rich information in your body paragraph now let's take a look at the next uh, the last uh, argument that I give or the last supporting details I mentioned that a uh, plastic bag is convenient because it's waterproof so it's safe okay uh, so I give a further explanation again uh, about being waterproof I explain here that if it's raining you don't have to worry uh, you don't have to worry that your um, bag is going to be wet okay so um, as you can see here when I make my supporting detail it's not only just okay plastic bag is convenient because it's lightweight it's easy to hold and waterproof and that's it but after that I still give explanation more and more explanation after I mention my point in the supporting detail uh, in here I use analysis and I also use uh, examples to justify if you can do this then you can make a rich body paragraph and your um, your argument of saying that a uh, plastic bag is convenient is proven logically okay now uh, the last part of the body paragraph is of course the conclusion this is almost like the uh, the sauce the tomato sauce that you have in your burger tomato sauce makes the burger uh, united like the taste is united because without a sauce it's almost like there's nothing to uh, blend your lettuce and your beef and your uh, cheese so you do need a tomato sauce now to uh, conclusion is not complicated it's pretty easy uh first what you can do is to see the topic sentence and also the supporting detail what you have discussed in your paragraph and then use your skill to summary to summarize okay summarize the content uh, by uh, restating the information just remember to not only use the same word so let's take a look at this example um, here we have our uh, 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 what, do we, what do we have here um, here we use the complete paragraph so please check out your topic sentence and then check out your uh, supporting detail and then from that make one sentence to be the conclusion as you can see here it's almost the same but I use different words this is uh, so use your skill in paraphrasing that you uh, you did uh, on the first the early meetings of uh, interpretive reading and argument at the uh, writing class um, see here so far this convenient quality is still quite undefeated by bags from other materials uh, I mentioned by bag from other materials because you see I also compare in my uh, supporting detail I compare it with a paper bag and this is likely why its consum consumption is still high see basically this sentence is uh, basically uh, it's the same as the topic sentence but I write it in a different way using uh, my uh, paraphrasing skill okay so now uh, building the body paragraph uh, remember you do not only have one body paragraph so after you finish the first body paragraph then finish the next body paragraph and following 
the next step so you can have uh, a complete a burger feeling and then now it's time to build the concluding paragraph this is the last paragraph of your essay or let we say, let us say that it's the lower bun remember a good burger also needs to have a good bun because it's not going to be a burger if you don't have a good bun and because a uh, concluding sentence is the lower burger that means it has to be strong because it's the one that will hold your burger so what are the parts there are two parts of the concluding paragraph the first one is of course the summary well you know what summary is this is basically the restatement of the whole essay but please use your way of paraphrasing your skill of paraphrasing um you can you can do this you can give a summary of one or two sentences only you don't need a lot and then uh, the second part of the buddy paragraphs is the final comment. This is probably the easiest part because you basically can can say anything that you want because this is about your opinion. This is about your feelings about this matter, uh, your topic that makes the, the readers intrigued by it. So this will help your essay close strongly. Remember, the lower bun needs to be strong. Now, create your summary. How do you create your summary? Easy. Read through your thesis statement and body paragraphs and then summarize the main idea. You have done this before with, uh, with uh, several materials. You have done a summary of a book. You have done a summary of uh, a story, a short story. So I believe strongly that you will not have a significant problem in summarizing the main idea uh, or to put the main idea in your essay and then uh, don't forget to use the skill of paraphrasing remember when you paraphrase you sometimes can use a synonym or you can also create different structure of the sentence okay let's take a look at the, the example that I use here this is my uh, summary. I only use one sentence, but you can use more sentences if you know if you need to do that. Okay, so my summary is to sum up. Okay, don't forget to have a transition signal here. To sum up, I have shared you some transition signals uh, before uh, in our early time of the IRO class but if you don't know you can just search online there are a lot of transition signals that you can find online uh, I use the transition uh, signal to, uh, to indicate that this is a concluded conclusion uh, to sum up plastic bags are, are still very popular I use the word very popular this is similar to have a lot of fans and similar to high consumption of plastic bags because of their easy use so I use the word easy use here to replace convenient and affordability I use this to replace the word cheap okay now uh, we're going to talk about the final comment so as usual as you have done before read through your whole essay and then think about what you feel about your topic and then write your summary uh, please make sure that the whole concluding paragraph is uh, more than three sentences three or more sentences and um, so it's not like one summary one sentence summary and one sentence opinion please have more okay uh, okay let's take a look at this example the purple one is the uh, the summary and then this is my uh, you can say opinion or feeling yeah so basically this is this is something that you can free to do because it's your opinion yeah 
This seems odd considering that plastic bags are famously known as dangerous pollutant and some efforts to replace them with more environmentally friendly bags are continuously growing. So I mentioned my opinion here about how plastic bag is dangerous but people still like it. So you know I show the irony of it. Um, and then I give opinion that uh, to reduce plastic bag, of course, we know this we need the supports from everyone not only the government not only Environmentalists, but everyone has to support it um, And I give a further example here like shopper uh, to refuse to use plastic bag and to use reusable or environmentally friendly shopping bags to replace plastic bags uh, and that's my conclusion if we want to save the world from the danger of plastic pollution I have all this opinion the green part uh, this is basically from my own experience so it's not going to be difficult to write this because you know this is something that I do every time I shop so this is something that I have believed for many years so you can also do that just just use your experience, use something that you believe strongly. Okay, so good luck everyone. Um, happy writing and uh, if you have any issue, remember to email me or uh, to ask for a friend's help. Okay, thank you so much. See you.